Hailing from the realm of Muspelheim, the fire giant Sirt waits at the end of the second trial. The lower stones on this path discuss Ragnarok and the end of the world through flame. In essence, Sirt is the harbinger of the apocalypse in this setting. The approach to the giant is filled with rune gates and fire sacrifice. This is the second trial that Senua must face before crossing the bridge to hell. However, we must remember that fire represents more than pure destruction. If the world is said to meet its end through flame, a greater understanding of fire symbolism may help us understand this apocalypse a bit better. For this trial, one thing to keep in mind is that there are two kinds of apocalypse. The universal one, such as Ragnarok, and the personal one, the end of one's personal world. For the purposes of this video, we will be focusing on the second type, as the characters are the focus of this story. Have you ever wondered what the word apocalypse means? The word evolved from Greek and has two parts, the prefix apo, meaning off or away from, while the rest is from the word kaliptine, meaning to conceal or cover. Together, apocalypse means to uncover something that has been concealed. This definition is also why the book of Revelations describes the event of the apocalypse. Revelation being the process of revealing something that has been hidden. For a personal apocalypse, the revelation involves a process of transformation for the one seeking illumination. The death of the old self and birth of the new. This can be represented by key 13 of the major arcana, the death card. Death is the transition from one form of existence to another. The skeleton here symbolizes what remains of the old self after the change is made. The sun represents the end of night and the dawn of the new self after the struggle is complete. Within the metaphor of the fire giant Sirt, the old self must be burned away before the new one can emerge forth. As Druth states, Sirt's name means blackened in reference to the burnt husk left behind the body after a fire. Another way to look at this is the blackened flesh is a cocoon the caterpillar forms before transforming into a moth. With this in mind, let's return to the trial of Sirt. Unlike the previous area, the path of fire is guarded by gates emblazoned with runes. The gameplay mechanic here involves finding these runes hidden in the world. Whether it be a tree, cinder on the ground, or a shadow on the wall, finding them unlocks the gate and allows Senua to pass. However, there is more to these gates than simple puzzles. Each involves a specific psychological process that aligns with Senua's journey. By analyzing these sequences of runes, we get a better understanding of the journey our hero goes on throughout her quest. The runes that adorn the gates are written in Elder Futhark, a proto-Germanic alphabet used between the 2nd and 8th century AD. Each letter represents not only a sound, but a philosophical concept as well. The first gate has the runes Hagalaz and Algis. Hagalaz means storm, while Algis is attributed to a shield or protection. Hagalaz is the esoteric crisis of the self. As its name suggests, it is the personal storm of the psyche required for change. For this reason, it is closely aligned with Ragnarok, the great storm that brings about a macrocosmic transformation. Algis represents divine protection as well as the connection to the gods. The old tribes used to engrave the Algis rune on their shields, believing it marked them with divine protection. This first gate acts as both a warning and advice. Before crossing the threshold, Senua must shield herself mentally. If she is not prepared, the storm she will soon face will destroy her rather than change her. On this note, I find it interesting that before Senua enters the area of the first gate, she must pass over a river. Before approaching the fire, she crosses a barrier of water to counterbalance it. Upon being burnt and leaving the area, she crosses this river again. On a hill behind some abandoned structures, Senua comes to the second rune gate. This one shows two different characters. One is Degas, meaning dawn, and the other is Raido, which translates to horse or journey. The Degas rune is symmetrical and thus represents the union of opposites, such as night and day, or male and female. Balancing these two aspects is what brings illumination, literally the dawn of a new way of seeing the world. 
For this reason, Degas is read as a notification of an upcoming transition in life. By leaving the night behind, one steps forward into a new light. Raido is the journey of life, or the path we find ourselves on. Now that Senua has entered the storm, she finds herself on a new path. This journey will eventually leave behind the old and lead to illumination. She is on the road to dawn. The final gate can be found between a pair of abandoned buildings and bears the mark of three runes. Nauthis, meaning hardship, Wunjo, which means joy, and Therisas, which translates to a thorn or danger. Starting at the end, Therisas is the threat that awakens the will to action. Without a danger to face, we have no reason to act. For this reason, it is associated with the giant's assault on Asgard, the danger that animates the Aesir to action. Nauthis can best be described as the gap between where we are now and where we wish to be. It is the gap where trials occur, the hardship required to reach the destination. Wunjo is the joy after a long struggle, where the individual is victorious. This gate, in essence, speaks of the process where a danger animates the hero to action. After a series of trials and suffering, the hero is greeted by the joy of victory. Upon reaching the first gate, Druth instructs Senua to find the runes and hold them in her mind's eye. This is a primary gameplay mechanic found throughout the Hellblade. The Furies ask multiple times within the story what the purpose of this ritual is, questioning whether it is pointless. Without realizing it, Senua is unconsciously absorbing the concepts and lessons present in the runes as she locates them in the environment. By the end, she is wiser for having completed this task. On the path of Valraven, the Lower Stones discuss how Odin hung himself in sacrifice upon the Yggdrasil for nine days. After succeeding in this trial, he learned how to read the runes. Now Senua, through trial and sacrifice, must learn how to read them as well. These gates, however, are only part of the trial. The other involves ritual fire sacrifice. The Shade of Druth recounts the story of his time imprisoned by the Northmen. While enslaved, he was forced to bear witness to his captors burning prisoners alive in order to create a path to Surt. They, however, were never successful. As discussed earlier, the flames are symbolic of transformation and refinement. By sacrificing others to the fire, the Northmen were not personally exposed to it. Druth finally escaped his enslavement on the shores of Orkney when he ran through the flames to escape. He comments that he knew the Northmen would not follow as they themselves were fearful of the flames. Transformation can be a terrifying thing. One leaves behind the safety of the known world an image of oneself to burn away in the flames. This is symbolized by the skeleton on the death card. When going into the refiner's fire, one has no idea what they will become on the other side. The slave, Findin, ran through the inferno and died. Druth was born as soon as he reached the other side. And into that fire, Findin made his escape. What was Findin burnt away that day? But from the flames, a new man stepped forward and Druth was born. Druth, the man that I am now. This can be considered a personal apocalypse for the man who was once Finden. The experience can be painful and frightening. Think about it. Would you be willing to sacrifice everything about who you are without any knowledge of who you will become? Would you allow the world you know and feel safe in be torn away without knowing if the new world would be better or not? Despite attempting to reach Surt through fire sacrifice, the Northmen feared this transformation represented by the Blaze and thus did not pursue the runaway slave. The echoes of this story can be witnessed during Senua's trial by flame. As she passed through the ramshackled wooden structures and burnt trees, she finds effigies of Surt that are surrounded by burnt corpses. Senua's mindscape is being shaped around the stories she heard from Druth. With similar imagery, she walks the same psychological path that Findin did, leading up to his dash through the fire. By the time Senua passes through the final gate, she catches fire and we witness her burn away. 
You say your world has collapsed. Good. Let it collapse. And have the courage to shed your tears. Raise your world! My world is dead. Only then, as with a newborn, will you see the world anew. The use of the word raise is most illuminating as it phonetically contains two words in one. To raise something to the ground means to destroy it down to the foundation. But to raise something up is to elevate something or rebuild. Senua is being told not to fear the destruction because it allows for the creation of something better. Just in time to fight Surt, she is metaphorically reborn and vanquishes the fire giant. During this experience, the lesson Senua must learn is acceptance of the Flames of Transformation. In the previous trial, she learns to slay the illusions of Valravin. In a sense, the woman bound by lies is left to die, while another who sees the truth walks forward. Near the end of the story, we physically see this process when Senua abandons her reflection to die after entering the mirror. This experience is just as painful and terrifying as walking through the fire. Not all can endure it. Just like the choice that Morpheus gave Neo, some choose to make this journey, while others shy away. There is no shame in this. The Northmen were frightened of the flames. They chose to avoid a spiritual and psychological metamorphosis. Druth and Senua both chose to pass through the flames and over the course of their stories went through the process of death and rebirth. Have you ever died before? It's a serious question. When the illusion of self is shattered, you simply cease to be. Though it may not seem that way to others, you know when it is true. Stranger in your own body. An imposter. And nothing is the same ever again. Senua has died before. And she will do so again. <laughs>